have the distinct pleasure of talking to Kurt Nock, which is one of the foremost experts and dealers in records. You know, Kurt, I get asked all the time, I have records, or I found some records at a local antique shop or a garage sale, and are they valuable? And, you know, the answer to that is, well, that's, that's a big question. Tell me, Kurt, are they? It's like every kind of collectible or antique out there. Some things are valuable and some things aren't, and most things are not. Okay. It's sometimes a better idea to know what's not valuable than to know what is valuable, because you'll save an awful lot of time. That's true. That's true. Um, so with most collectibles, and I'm going to think that this probably applies to records as well, condition plays a huge role. Right. When they're out looking or they have records and they're trying to decide, are these important records? Are these something that have value? Condition's going to going to play a, a role. Uh, maybe they're warped, they're scratched. What, what are the kinds of things that we look for? Well, in terms of record condition, you've got things like the defects you were describing. Then you also have what's just general record wear. How much has the record been played and what kind of condition are the grooves in? Because even if you don't have any scratches or edge chips, if the record's been played to death, you're not going to get good sound out of it. For instance, I've pulled a couple of things out here. This record, uh, you can see a lot of graying in this groove. And that's, uh, that's record wear. When you uh, look... That, that happens from just playing it? Just from playing it, that's oh, wow. right. Okay. If you compare it with this record, you don't see that any gray in the groove. Yes, basically this is an unplayed recording. So you can see a big difference between this one and this one. If you play this, you're going to get a lot of distortion. It's not going to sound very good. And this generally happens when people uh, were playing the record, maybe with a needle that they didn't change when they should have. Or, oh or if it's just been played on a jukebox or a lot of times, and of course it's going to get worn out. So condition, as you say, is extremely important, but that's only one of several factors when it comes to determining what a record's actually going to be worth. Okay, um, I see that there are labels on these records. Mm -hmm. Is the condition of the label something that we need to pay attention to? Uh, again, if it's a record that is valuable, then yes, the label condition is important. If it's, uh, you know, you can have a very a mint record and still not have anything that's worth anything. Something that was made for the masses, more in quantity? Yeah, the, the more common a record is, the more copies they press, the less interest it's going to have today. doesn't mean that the music is bad. Music is generally going to be something that you'd prefer to listen to because it's recognizable. It sold a lot of copies. Mm -hmm. So things by uh, Bing Crosby and Glenn mm -hmm. Miller and Dinah Shore, great music people like to listen to, records are generally going to be worthless. Really? Another example would be uh, this fellow, Enrico Caruso. Oh. I get calls from people all the time asking, uh, what are my Caruso records worth? Well, Caruso was great, Victor's greatest recording asset in mm -hmm. the early part of the 1900s. Sold more records than anybody. So with very few exceptions, Caruso records are extremely common mm -hmm. and of very little value. Is there anything that's just the complete kiss of death when, when considering buying a record? Uh, well... Yeah. I stumped you on uh, this one. Polkas. <laughs> That's the kiss of death, period. People, uh, people generally don't, uh, yeah. So there's a style as opposed to the record uh, there, itself. There, there, there are styles, styles that are just... There are styles, there are labels, there are artists, yeah. Uh, you know, again, probably 95% of the 78 RPM records that you're going to find are going to have no value. Musically, they may be interesting, but in terms of actual cash value, no interest whatsoever. If you go to an antique store or a flea market and you find a box of records, uh, very little chance you're going to find anything in there that's worthwhile. So I would, I never recommend people just go out and spend money to buy things hoping that there's going to be something. You've got to educate yourself. But there are records out there that can sell for hundreds or thousands of dollars. And this is the guy that would know because he sells ten to 20,000 records every single year. We were talking earlier and you made mention of, you know, there's a $4 record and there's a $4,000 record. What would be the difference? Uh, well, going back to what makes a record valuable. If it's an artist that is collectible uh, in an, a genre or idiom that's collectible, for instance, blues is very collectible, mm -hmm. polkas are not. Mm -hmm. Okay, So if you've got a, a rare blues records, a record by an artist that is uh, a prominent, well-known or desirable artist, say Robert Johnson or Blind Willie McTell or Blind Lemon Jefferson or whatever, then then that's good. It's got to be an original pressing, not a reissue done some years later. Condition, again, is very important. You can have a record that's brand new. It could be worth $1,000 and play to death. It's worth $10, okay? Uh, so all of these different factors come into play. And, of course, how many of that particular record was pressed originally? 
these sorts of records that were made during the Depression may have only been seen press runs of 25 to 50 copies. Mm. So today, how many of those have survived? Well, there are some records that haven't survived that we know of. There are no copies known to exist. So even if you find one that's totally worn out, you've mm -hmm. still got something. But, uh, but those are all factors that have to be taken into account to determine whether or not a record is valuable. There are books that are out there, publications that people can buy that will help them determine if their record that they have found or inherited is something that was mass produced and maybe no. it's that no? Uh, there was one price guide uh, that sold for years but it's been out of print for a few years and there's no plans to republish it. So at this point there is no real price guide to vintage 78 RPM records. Now there is a price guide that will cover the post-war rock and roll, rhythm and blues stuff, but mm -hmm. not, not the pre-war material. Um, I'm thinking I have a project for you. Oh, I've got too many projects. <laughs> I've got too many st things going on. But, uh, but there are ways of determining value. I, for instance, uh, have a want list that, that goes category by category of types of 78s and tells you what to look for, what not to look for, and gives you an idea of what we pay for it. That's perfect. So that's, that's very helpful. And, and it's, it's something to stick in your pocket and carry with you. And take with you when you're out at a flea market or garage sale or, or wherever you're exactly. at an antique shop. Mm -hmm. That's perfect. Um, why don't you tell people how they can find that want list? Uh, easiest way is go to my website. Which is? 78rpm.com. 78rpm.com. How easy does it get? And uh, you can find everything you need to know there. Wonderful. I would think it's safe to say that he is the record man. Tell me a little bit about your auction and how the, the viewers can learn more. We do two auctions a year, mm -hmm. one in the spring, one in the fall. Again, through my website, if you're interested, you can get a copy of the catalogs. But when we do the uh, auction, we mail out catalogs all over the world, and people can submit bids on anything that they're interested in, uh, cylinders, 78s, Edison diamond discs, and related things. Uh, once the auction closes, people are invoiced for whatever they've won. If they won. If they've won. So it's kind of like eBay where you can watch the auction? or is It's it totally blind. Totally so blind. nobody knows how they're doing or what any of the other bids are. They don't get to bid again. They're putting their best well, you can, foot forward. You can change your bid, add or retract a bid at any time up to the closing point, but you do so not knowing what anything else. So you don't know if you've been outbid. Any, that's correct. So you are. But since all of the bids are dropped to the second highest bid level, if you bid a hundred and the next highest bid is ten dollars, then we'll drop it to ten percent over the next highest bid, so you okay. win the record for eleven dollars. Oh wow. So you're, you have the ability to go ahead and submit your highest bid initially, mm -hmm. and hopefully you won't have to pay anywhere near that amount. Hopefully. Thanks so much for having us out today. It was wonderful taking a look at all of your inventory and some of the beautiful things that you've shown us here today. And I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thanks for having me on. If you want to learn anything about records, you can go to Kurt's website or you can email me at rain at antiques.com. That's R-E-Y-N-E at antiques.com.